Alright, so I'm back working on a compiler. So, um, if you're unaware, Pervance made a series a while called Bitwise. And this is what I've been sort of using to learn how to write a compiler. Um, so, his language is called Ion, and I've basically just been writing my own implementation of that. Um, yeah, so what I want to work on today is running to first statements. So in one of the videos, uh, he issues sort of as like a homework or like a, you know, thing to do on your own is to try to figure out the first statements. And, uh, that seems like a useful and really interesting one to, um, you know, deal with. So I'm going to see what I can do with that today. Um, I guess one of the first thing I could do is demo, like, uh, it's only been, like, a little bit that I have, like, end-to-end, -end, like, you know, compilation workflow running. So, like, the only real program I've, like, written in this so far, like, tac -tel. Um So that's this one right here. So here's Ion. It's basically, like, C with just a, a few minor differences. Um... Like, uh, probably the most notable, like, out-of-order declarations, which I don't think are even being used here. But if I were to, like, take all these functions and drop them, like, below main, that'll still compile, so... Oh, yeah, I'm shadowing variables. That's a good thing. Where is that happening? Oh, that's a bug. I'll have to look into that because I'm going to have to fix that for um, the first statements anyway, but. Where's the shadow happening? What a great start, huh? Anyway, you can see tic tac toe running, right? Um, so we'll deal with that today as well, because um, one of the things about doing defer the way that we're going to do it is like shadowing variables is explicitly disallowed um, to help simplify things. Uh, but let's get started with this. So I did take a little bit of like high level notes on some stuff, so right. Statements are type checked in the context of the first statement. Sure. It's at exit, they execute in stack order. So you basically just sort of unwind the stack of active to first statements whenever the scope exits. Returns and breaks, we need to deal with those. Um, sure. So let's just sort of uh, lay out what we're kind of going to do here. Like, let's maybe tests defer. So the idea is something like this, right? Um, let's see. I remember in his video where he was like laying out uh, you know, a good example to sort of test how this works. It was something like this, right? Like you're going to have like, I think the example was with the window creation. So like create a window and then like defer, destroy it. So let's do this in Ion, right? So it's like you have a window and let's give it a name like taco. Right. And then Let's say it's going to be in main. Uh, uh, 
concerning it. All right. Um, yeah, and then you're going to need to pass the window. Um, and then, you know, say you have a scope, like a while loop. And then, um, so the idea is to have sort of, uh, inside of here, there's a number of things that are going to cause you to have to unwind, like the defer or stack, right? It's like, um, like break, return, and continue. So, you know, let's do something like if some condition um, and then also like let's get multiple defers so that we can like see how that will work like uh, opening a file Yeah, Vim doesn't understand Ion, so I have to do a lot of manual formatting, which is a little frustrating. But okay, and then like defer the close of the file. And then. You have some condition return. So what this is going to do is this defer and this defer. Um, you can have some other, so this is condition one, other condition, um, this one should only trigger this close, um, If we do this, like, I think the last example was like, you do another, like, malloc something, I don't know, eight bytes. And then defer the free. And this formatting is so bad. Um, basically something like that. So, I don't know, you need like... I don't know, one, two, three, four. False, false, true, false, sure. Doesn't really matter because it's just we just want to generate the code. It's like obviously meaningless. It's not gonna like do anything, but um, we do want to generate code for it. Um, to test that we can do these things. So what this is going to generate should generate the following C code. So it's going to be very similar. Right, so you have an int main. Um, right, we're going to have some window thing. Create window. This, right? Well, that's another interesting thing, right? So, well, we can do that later. But. Yes, yes. Uh, what's this going to be? I don't know. I'm sure I'm wondering. Uh, 
All right, so what has to happen here is anytime there's the return, you're going to have to do so this return, this return. But importantly, they happen in like stack order. So last in, first out. So this close will happen before the window destroy. And then um, for the continue, only the close has to happen. And then here in the break, so this free has to happen, then the close, um, that's it. And then also here at scope exit, so there's two scope exits happening here. And this if block um, exits, this defer will need to run right here. And then at this scope exit, the close will have to run. And I think that that is everything. Let's see if that makes sense, right? Let's create the window. Okay, open the file. If you return, every defer up to that point has to run. So the close and the destroy. If you continue, that's only the scope. So the close happens. Here we have another mac. We free, we close, we free, close, destroy. Yeah, so I think that's basically how it should work. Um, the only things we need to do is just like define all this other shit, so. Like we need a window, which is just gonna have a name in it, which is, I don't know, title. Um, here, create window, makes, going back and forth between ion and C is confusing. This returns a window runner, I guess. It doesn't really have to do anything right now. It's just gonna generate code, so I don't have to. But it is gonna get type checked, so like it has to the return type has to match, so let's see. I suppose we can just do this. Well, uh, how do we do this? There's a couple ways we could do this. Uh, yeah. Or no, I think we, oh, this is another thing we're gonna have to probably do. I don't know if I've done like field access for pointer types. Um, like the cogent, I think, is just gonna generate the dot, but in C it needs to be the arrow. So we'll have to look into that too. Uh, but yeah, it's just gonna be this. Or, yeah, we're gonna need to do this. Just as an example. Uh -huh. Sure. Let's see. I'm going to use C functions. Well, we got malloc, which takes what a uint. Size returns third star. 
What else we gotta use? We gotta use open and F close and free. Winners, uh, uh, what's our Open file name and uh, mode and returns file pointer, but I don't think we have like I don't think the type check gonna work for that yet, so we'll just use the void star for now. And then F close is just a file. I guess we'll start for now. Something like that. Um, this is just dummy shit, so destroy. Just freeze it. Right. Um anything else we're doing? I don't think so. That's a basic idea. So, in order to uh, handle this in, compile in the compiler, the first thing we need to do is create a new uh, statement type, like a defer statement. It's just going to have like one field that's just a statement, right? And that includes like uh, statement blocks. So in theory, you should be able to do something like this to like just have a scope, and then you can have a bunch of statements in here. Um, so yeah, the approach is gonna be something like this. Um, God, these comments are so goofy. Uh, all right, we need to create a uh, statement type. We need to be able to parse the first statements. Like this is an AST node. That's going to be basically like a return, right? Like a return is just like you parse the expression, but here it's going to be a statement instead of an expression. Super easy there. Um, for um, like semantic analysis, you're just going to resolve the statement immediately. So like when we hit this defer, we're going to resolve uh, you know, this statement. So basically just type checking on that. And then there's also a few special things you have to do, like disallow returns from defer and like breaks any of those like scope exiting things um yeah so for resolution i don't know like what to write for this just resolve it immediately basically And really much, most of the work I think is gonna be in like the code gen, C code gen. So that's where you're gonna have to basically uh, create a stack of statements that are like active defer statements. And then on scope exit, you're gonna unwind the stack back to like where the scope started. The difference being in returns, cause that has to go like basically to function scope which should be like the top level so it's like unwinding the whole stack um yeah so for cogen it's like you know keep a stack of first statements and then on scope exits well 
you have a few different things. So this could be like a break, a continue, or like reach the end of the scope via like the closing brace. Um, you sort of unwind the innermost scope and uh, you know generates. C statements for you just oh, I'm probably behind you guys probably can't see this right? yeah for each statement on the stack uh, and then on scope exit for return Unwind the entire stack of diverse, basically. That's very roughly, I think, what we're going to try to do. So let's start with creating a diverse statement. So um, well, in the AST. Um, oh yeah, here's the grammar. So we can just drop that into a statement, turn continue, and then here we're gonna add defer. So like the literal, oh, that's it, gonna be a new um, keyword we have to do as well. So defer some statement. Well, a semicolon, but you could also have What I'm thinking is just like, if you have a statement block, you shouldn't have to have the semicolon. Like this shouldn't need. So I have to think about that, but that's basically that. So statements, we now have statement defer. So, a defer statement just has a statement in it. Here. Um, we're going to need to add a keyword for that. So, in the lexing, where do I have keyword stuff? Keyword. Uh, keyword defer. So, yep. Yeah. We initialize that with the string defer. Checking if it's a keyword. I'm doing that like a dumbass right now. Just literally check every one. Size of and add for Is that all the keyword stuff? I think so, all right. I think that's all I need to do to add a keyword. Sure. All right, so we gotta be able to parse that. So go into parsing. We should have a parse statement. Where's the... Yeah, this guy, where are you? So we can add another keyword match if it is defer. We're gonna parse 
Statements defer. So match will consume the token for keyword. And then it's basically going to be like um, return. Yeah, it's going to be like this. So uh, store off the position of the token. So we know like where in the file this is happening. Um, this is now going to be a statement. Um, but you have to have one, right? So mm -hmm. for now, we'll just do the expect token. I mean, I, I suppose what we could do is say like if statement kind is statement block. Is that what it is? No. Oh, isn't it like race block? Yes. So if it's brace block, you don't need it. So if it's not brace block, then we expect the token. Then what is this? It's a statement defer. All right, so we need some like a, a constructor thing for this. Or like statement return. Or sorry, this is the AST, not the type. So something like this. Statement defer takes a position and a statement. So allocate a defer. Uh, defer statement is that, and we return it. Sure. So that should parse it, right? Does that make sense? It's pretty straightforward. Um, let's look back at our test. What did I call it? Defer. All right, parse it, then resolve it. So moving on to resolve. So let's add, um, you know, a condition in resolve statement here. So I suppose we can just put it somewhere here. Actually, we probably don't even need a separate, uh, like some of these maybe should be broken out. I'll just do it in line like the rest of them for now. So for defer, so what are we going to do? We're basically just going to resolve all of the statements, well, these statements, it could be either a, a, a statement block or a single statement. We just resolve it and that's it. So it's just a one liner basically, right? Resolve statements, statements, defer statement. Be like that. So, 
I think that's all I have to do. In Kojin... Let's see. This is where the bulk of the work is going to be. So, you know, we're going to have an uh, like gen statement. What are we going to do? Well, if we hit, so there's a number of things we have to do, right? So for like any type of statement that um, results in a scope exit, like continue breaks and returns and statement blocks, well, maybe not, but definitely these three, we're gonna have to, uh, check for any defer statements that are on uh, some stack up to the previous inner scope. Yes, the other thing we're going to have to do is, um, you know, ignore this. So for cogent for the actual defer statement, so like once you hit this right here, there's no code that gets generated immediately. So you hit statement defer. We just return empty string or what? Wait, who calls gen statement? So it's gonna be like in some statement block. So yeah, gen statement lock. Um, if statement kind is defer, then we continue. Um, and let's start thinking about like the you know stack we're gonna have to build for defers it's very similar to the local symbol table uh, in resolve we have these local sims which is just well, right now it's a static array, and you keep a pointer to the like top of the stack. And then we have some helper functions like scope enter or something. Local scope. Or like scope. Uh, what is it called? Push. Local sims here. So like enter scope, leave scope, and push. So we have something similar to this, but in Kojin for um, let's see. Defers hold statements. Uh, so what are we gonna have? We're gonna have an array of def 
Fur. Stack or something. Max defers. Max defer stack. Something like that. Um, how many defers can we have? Shit ton? I don't know. That's a reasonable amount. Should we just do like 4K or something? I don't know. I have no idea. Sure. For now, that's fine. Um, so this could be like the fur interscope, maybe. Um, so we need this, and then uh, we need a pointer to like defer stack end. Which just defaults to the beginning, I guess. How we do? Yeah. So for interscope, um, the idea here is to just get a pointer back to where the top was so that when you exit, you can, you know, pop the stack back to that point. So this would be the first stack end. For leaf scope. I mean, scope starts fine. Yeah. First stack end. Yeah. Uh, defer push. So, do we push the defer statement itself or the statement in like the defer AST node? If we do the actual statement, we have to like read through the pointer each time, but I don't know if we need that context for anything. Not totally sure right now. Anyway, if uh local sims with the first stack. Max the first stack. Too many, uh, like active defer statements. Max is that. All right. So that makes some sense to me. So if we look at like gen statement Uh, 
Um, I'm a dumbass. Like, yeah. So when you hit a defer, that's where you push it on the stack. So uh, let's drop a mark there and then get rid of this. Oops. What was that? I think I just wrote out a random file. Yeah, look at that shit. Um. All right, so we get rid of that, and then so if you hit here, here's where we're gonna push it onto the stack. So uh, how's that work again? You do like a uh, starts scope start is the first scope. Enter take any arguments. What do I call that? Defer enter scope. I need to regenerate tags. Yeah, then we leave. Um, no, 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 no. This is just the push. I'm, I'm scatterbrained right now. Um, this is not this. This is going to happen like in, uh, anytime you enter a scope, like a, a while, um, while statement, for statements, ifs, all of those like brace block, that's where you're going to do this scope entering type of thing. Yeah. And then anytime you hit a defer, that's where um, push. So the word push, I guess just this statement. And then I guess we're gonna have to return an empty string. How's that going to affect things? Or I guess we could do this in the outer thing. What makes more sense? If we look at this, we could just, uh, you know, push it here and then skip it as far as uh, appending to the code gen buffer. Which makes more sense to me than outputting empty string. Doesn't matter. It's just this guy, right? So it's gonna. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, so it's gonna be here. So when you're entering scope, this is where think this wants to go. Let's get those tunes back.
All right, so this is one of those points where we're leaving an Interscope. So um, any pending have to do that then um, when we're doing all of these if you hit continue break or return these places you're also going to have to handle that so return is the one where we have to unwind the entire first thing. So what does that look like? That means you're going to need to know where the current scope, um, like the start of that scope was, which means you're probably going to have to pass that in here. Either that or make it global. Um, well, I mean, why not just pass it in, I guess? So we have this first scope start, which I guess I have to pass in. So, well, let's get the compiler to tell us where the rest of this shit goes. Right, so we can't have that. Uh, Error statement. Um, so you pass in the defer statement. Or <laughs> It's weird. What do you call that thing? Like, is the defer statement the outer thing or the inner thing? I mean, you can just call it inner statement, I guess. I don't know. Naming things is hard. So, this is the thing. So, the defer statement is the inner statement. And you return the outer one. Yeah. the same thing here you do a scope start so I guess we can just pass that through scope start a statement and I suppose well do we pass the expected return time Oh, 
What is that used for? Well, it shouldn't matter here because you shouldn't be able to return from. So I think it should be fine to say no. Who else calls resolve? I'm forgetting, like, how that's used. So, I mean, I know it's like, so for any statement that can return, we need to pass that. But inside of defer, its statements shouldn't be able to return. But I don't know if that means passing null makes sense here. And I suppose we can pass it in. But um, we have to ensure that no returns happen. So let's see. What is that? Differs in level of indirection. Um, wait, no, 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 this is an array of. Just wondering, should we mirror the resolution where like the scope comes first? Don't know. We've already done it this way. Defer scope starts. Okay. So that compiles now, that's good. Um, let me get some water. All right, um, so I think what I want to do now is maybe jump over before I start doing this, which will probably be like the most difficult part, not necessarily difficult, but the most difficult part of defer. I want to make sure, you know, the stuff I'm doing right now is at least behaving reasonably. So uh, let's go over to the test again and just get that like started working so we can step through the code. Um, oh, we got to also think about um, enforcing that shadowed variables. Um, you know, explicitly disallowing shadowed variables. And then look at the bug that was happening um, in tic-tac-toe when doing order independent stuff. So reordering functions in go. Oh. 
sword, chromat, and triggering. Like, we had two separate functions with the same variable that were saying they're shadowing. So we can take a note of that. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Um, well, let's see. Twenty-five are missing a semicolon. What are you talking about? It's probably this deferred thing. But anyway, let's uh, step in and see what's going on. Uh, I think I already have a. So defer test. Let's just see where it's breaking right now. This. Expected that token, but we don't have it. What is the token? Cond one. So, does this already check for a semicolon? I don't remember how that works. So simple statements do. Which includes calls, I guess. Oh, let's see. Our simple statement is here. Let's see what we have. Oh, where's that window? So here, yes, we get the semi already. Yeah. already handled. Right, now what do we got? 
Okay, top level declaration got this. Oh, it doesn't know these comments, right. Ugh. Alright, we'll just do this. I don't have multi line comments yet. But I do have single line. Alright, what now? Expected variable constant or function, but got. Line 11. Oops. Ah, right. So an ion size of a type has to start with colon, I believe. Oh, wait, no, we did get a type. I think this is what um, starts off a, a size of type spec. Like, there's size of expression and size of type spec. I believe you need the colon for type spec, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, okay. This is the pointer thing, so... Um, we don't handle this yet, which honestly doesn't matter, but we need to look into that. So, I thought I wrote this down. Yeah, it's right here. Let's move this. Uh, let's see. We need to handle that. But. We'll do that later because we just want to get this working. Window pointer got void pointer. Interesting. So if you have an explicit type here, it will use that. Ooh, okay, we run. Um, so where do we want to look? We want to look at like... Let's take a look in here. Ah, we have the defer right here. Statement defer. Statements in there. Great. Um, we want to look at when we resolve it, I suppose. So right now we're just trying to resolve what? First one is expert, it's a call to D. 
Destroy window, okay. Sure, so we resolve that. Just fine. Move on. Alright, and we're not doing any code gen yet, so that all seems like somewhat reasonable. Let's take a look at the output. Should just be the regular um, thing without the defers. Alright, so what do we get? So it just ignores the defer. Oh, I see. So outputting the empty string ends up um, with a new line in there, which is a side effect I guess we don't really want. So let's just do that. in here. So we get the statement. Um, if statement kind is defer, well, just push that onto the stack and continue to the next. statement. So now we don't get that. Right, so now let's see what we're going to do about actually generating these statements. So the first case we're going to encounter is um, the return. Which means we unwind the entire stack. Is that always true? Is there any... Like, do you always do the entire stack on a return? Like, it's returns only happen at function scope. So function scope is, we, we don't have an nested function, so it's always going to be global scope at that point. So I'm thinking that, yeah, you just align the entire stack. I can't think of a counter example right now. So for at least the first version, that's what we'll do. So let's look at uh, gen statement C. for return. So hmm. So I feel like we're going to want some like stack pop so the first statement is um, first So for this one specifically, I guess, um, it can return null because it's at the top scope. We're going to have to do something different for break and continue because you have to check 
if uh, you only want to pop if you are up to the start of the innermost scope. But for if there is one generated, so just gen. Statement C. So I'm thinking the this should be the inner statement, not the outer defer. Oh, interestingly. Um, if this is a block, this is where we need to check that the... Well, no, I guess it's in the, in the resolution pass. What we're going to need to do is make sure that none of the statements inside, uh, like a defer return or break or any of that but yeah that's going to happen in in the res resolution so let's just take note of that the statements inside a defer break Etc. Okay. Do we just pass on this to first scope start? Shouldn't matter because you should never hit this. That's why I'm wondering if, like, Null is better for these. Don't know. Um. Well, so let's do defer pop. Well, if defer stack end is equal to uh, defer stack Otherwise, we're going to decrement it. Well, you first want to decrement it and then return that. Turn that statement pointer in. So I think I have to dereference it, right? Uh, 
because it always points at the next empty slot, like one past the end of the thing. Does that make sense? The other thing we want to do is when we push um, here, so if it's defer, we push statement defer statement. That's what it's called, right? Yeah. You push the inner statement. Cool. Um, that makes sense to me. So spot oh we're in result Adrian. so let's go to here so if we go here and try to look at uh, the first deck Yet. at this point there's nothing on there right because there's other returns first here we go at this point there's two calls on the stack or two statement of type call expert call This one is, Jesus, destroy window. The other one being, um, let me do it like this. F close, is that true here? this return. Yes, great. So if we pop now, this the first statement is one of those. End is now at um, here, which is right. So it was here, now it's here. This 808. Cool. It is there, so we generate it. Ah, but we didn't do anything with that. So we're done. So I forget that gen statement actually just returns an allocated string. Interesting. So what we're going to have to do is like build up a string here, I guess. So I think that's what this whole like the pattern I've been using for that is having like a stretchy buff that I like write into and then just build up a string with that. The other thing I do is just a bunch of stir Fs, like I could just do Well, since well yeah, there's only one actually, that makes sense. Defer. 
Bird is that. Could do a check here, or I could just build it up. I'm torn between whether or not I want to do the like, you know, have a buffer like this, and then say like da printf into the stir. Um, this thing and then the alternative being I do this So it seems to make sense to do this. Yeah, so start with the stir. Then if uh, there is a first statement on the stack, well, we need to unwind the whole stack. That's, I think, why I was thinking about this, because we're going to have to do this multiple times. So I guess it's going to be like a do while sort of thing, right? So, um, pop one off the stack, and then, oh wait, yeah, I think we just want to do a normal. Um, so we pop one off. While we have one of these, we're going to um, append a statement to the string. Get the next one. Sure. I think we want to do new lines in there too, right? So normally I think uh, that's handled by the outer. Oh yeah, because we got to keep into account indentation. So. 
This is bizarre. I've never seen this on YouTube. Um, we're probably gonna want to like wrap this up into some other function, but all right. So we've written all that into stir, and then and then we're also going to want to. Print this whole business into there. All right, and then return that. Yes, sir. Um, so that means if that worked correctly we should see the two statements here and then the one uh, destroy window here and we get close destroy and then destroy. Perfect. But no semicolons. Huh. So is that usually handled by this as well? Hmm, we have this if semicolon follow statement. So we can follow that. If it follows the defer statement generated, then the new line. Semicolon redefinition. What does that mean? Oh, I think this just needs to move up here. So we have. The close, the destroy, the destroy. All right, that's progress. Now for um, the inner scope ones. So for continue, and break these ones are going to need to only go back to the current scope which is this the first scope start right so how's that going to work well it's going to be very similar anyway but let's see how it's different so Instead of checking, we, we can't pop 
with return, I believe we can like preemptively pop always, because at the end it just returns null, and that's fine. But here we need to check before we pop. So... For pop iron scope, maybe. And then you pass in the scope start. Could do it like that. So then we have this function just return null if uh, a, we're already. past that point. Um, yeah. Oh, that was like a Zelda thing. That was cool. So let's mark this, go up here. Defer pop current scope. So what do we say? We say you have defer stack end. So when we get the current scope, um, like when we enter a scope, it gives you one past, you know, it gives you the top of the stack, which is one past the last element in there. So we can check equality there. Yeah. So this takes a... Uh, this also takes a scope start. So if end is equal to, I guess, less than or equal to? Otherwise, you drop back and return it. Um, so I guess that's just a... This is just a special case of pop where this is just the first act, like the start of the thing. So maybe we, this isn't even a special thing and we could just um, like use a helper function for this in all cases. We'll see. <coughs> to add to the string continue uh, so how is that looking that we have failed So what's going on with continue? Let's we did compile, right? We compile, we run it, continue has issues. So let's see what's going on with that. Thank you. 
So, a statement is continue. And the stack, the end is at 810. So it's here, we have two things in there. Um, what is actually defer scope start? Hmm. So the scope start right now is the end of the stack. Why is that? Because we fucked something up. Uh, when does it get pushed? Or rather, when does defer enter scope happen? So at the beginning of any statement block, enter a scope. So here we enter a scope. And here we would have entered a new scope. sound does that mean I see sunny on to sub dude what's up that shit scared me did I get a degree no I did not um not in computer science uh I studied civil engineering in school and I hated that shit um yeah, so I'm not trained in this shit at all. I don't, never took a compiler course. I'm just a uh, self-taught programmer. Maybe that's why I'm fucking up so much. <laughs> tips on how you self-learn just program a shit ton dude i mean um i think the best advice i have is like work on projects like rather than like learning a bunch of theory like find a project that sounds cool like you know i feel like a lot of people why we get into programming is like games so like make a small game or like whatever it is that you think is cool like for me i wanted to learn about compilers right so pick a project and work on that and that's where you'll like learn the most, I think, is when you have like a reason to apply it. That's what I'd say. Um, yeah, I guess that's the best best I got. And like I could also say, just like avoid all of the like best practice knowledge and like you know. I feel like I kind of have a uh, issue with modern like software ideology about like how to do things like uh, approach things from first principles you know what I mean civil engineering was quite a switch um I suppose yeah but I just uh for me like I didn't know what I wanted to do when I went to college it was just like you know I knew I wanted to get a technical degree and um, ended up in engineering because I knew that would help me anyway. But I was still, I hadn't found what I was like into. It wasn't until after I graduated from university that I was, I found programming at all and like fell in love with that. So it was just uh, unfortunate for me that it took so long to find it. But, uh, all right, what was I working on? Um, This continue is broken because the scope um, push, or sorry, scope enters not happening correctly. A 
so when we enter scope, that gives you the end of the stack. And then for this four, so right, when we hit this while, right, that's gonna generate a statement block for all of these statements and it will enter a scope here. Why don't we just step through the code instead of trying to think about it? Now? So this is what we want. Gen statement block. There we go. Uh, so I guess we can just go right in. So the first block is what? Who's, that's not it, it's gonna be like an early one. So let's see, what do we have? We have a two statement one, a one statement one, and then this one, so it should be the next one. Yeah, so this is the function. So the first scope start is now this. Right. What we want to see is um, when we enter this if. what happens. So if we're stepping through, if we go one more time, this should be the while, right? There's five statements in here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, defer. So this is the while loop, I'm pretty sure. Uh, defer scope start is gonna be what? 808 now, which makes sense. Um, so we generate this statement, which is a init. So this statement here. Sure, go ahead and generate it. Give me the semicolon, the new line, the next one is a defer. So we push it on the stack. So right now we just have the one. Boom, now we have two. Great. Scope start is still 808, which was here. Next statement is the if. So we go into there. This is the block for the if. So the start for this guy is the end of the stack, which is true. So we generate this is the first if, so that should just be the return. Be fine. Right, that was it. Now we leave the scope, which should decrement this guy. 
Wait a second. Stack end is at here. So this what? Why is that? Um stack push could be incrementing the end, yeah. What we could also do is just say like if it's at the beginning we also do that. That wasn't the issue, but um so this seems wrong to me. Like the uh end is This is saying the stack is empty. How did that happen? So that was in the if. Now it's not empty. What? That was weird. I don't know what that was about. Let's keep going through here. So that was the if statement. So we go ahead and print that guy. Now we're in the next if statement, I believe. All right, statement if. This should be the uh, continue that we're going to hit. So we generate the continue. Well, yeah, the if, which will go into this statement block. Scope end is still there. Sure. This is the continue. Yes. So if we go into pop current scope, what do we have? Scope start is that's correct. End. It's equal to. Hmm, I see. Kind of. So, in, um, in here, um, you know, we when we enter a scope, so for example, for the if, Enter a new scope right here. But this continue, the, the defer is in this scope. So it's, oh yeah, 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 this is right actually, because it's like, 
Okay, when this scope ends... Oh, wait, that's kind of bizarre. So the continue is for the attached, whatever scope the continue is for, right? Right now what I'm checking is this, the, the innermost scope, which is this if scope, but that's not what continue continues from, right? Continue continues from this while loop. The scope is this one. And right now we don't have a way of detecting that. So what we need to do is somehow associate, uh, like break and continue, need to know the scope that they're attached to. So how do we do that? Um, how do we do that? Well, I think you just keep like a, the same way you keep like a, a scope start for each scope, you need like a, um, I don't know what to call it, but like breakable, continuable scope, the innermost like scope that you can break or continue from, what do we call that? Um, Exitable scope. Mm. Um, naming shit is sure difficult. I guess it's really only loops that you can break or continue from, right? So you could call that like defer loop scope. And then, I mean, this is the innermost scope that can break or continue. That break or continue refer to. So we do it like that. Um, does that make sense? Let's think through that. I think it does. So anytime you hit or while, let's take a look at the AST make statement kinds. What do you have in here? Brace block? Can you break out of a brace block? No, that's going to refer to the four. I think it's just a oh, do, do and switch. Can you break out of a switch? I mean, obviously you can, but I'm thinking, does defer matter there? I think so. So it's not just loops, but it's a basically loops. Loops with the exception of switch. I mean, we could call it defer break scope. Just call it that. 
This continue also breaks out of the loop, it just... Deferred breakable scope? I don't know, we'll call it break scope. Okay, um, so what we need to do here is in statement block. I guess anytime you call statement block from one of those, so not here, but for four statements before we do this. Block is going to be this puppy. So before we do that, we're going to want to say, um, you want to save off like the scope for this guy. So what did we just call that? Like the defer break scope. is uh, defer static end. Yeah, so it's the same idiom as before. We just need a new um, for enter scope. So we can still use this and then instead of leave scope, we're just gonna set Leave break scope, I guess. Previous. Yeah, it's that. Instead of this, though, it's. Uh, Break scope. Yeah. Um, so this is the statement thing. It's um, break scope start is defer enter scope. Then defer. Leave break scope, break scope start. I think that's what we want to do. Does that compile? It doesn't because we're still debugging. No, it does. Okay. So we need to do the same thing for do statements, um, which means we're going to have to break these out, block is that, expert is that, and this is the condition. This 
is do block while condition. So what do we do? Enter the scope, generate the block, leave the scope, and the condition. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing for Y loop. So the condition is that, the block is that, while condition block. And we're gonna do the scope. Honestly, it doesn't matter about that. It's not gonna be more readable. It's very noisy. Okay. Maybe we will spread those out. So uh, we have do, we have while, we have four. We need to do switch. So how does that one work? Um, we'll handle that later. We'll punt on that for now. To do, defer, scope, enter, and exit. So for do while, that's everywhere. Okay, so now what we need to do is um, kind of lost track of train of thought. What we were trying to do is here, right? So this continue, we don't want to unwind the defer stack uh, from the innermost scope, you want to uh, do it from the innermost loop scope or break scope. So let's do that. So for continue, ah, but now um, now you have two things. Right, there's like the inner scope and then you need the break scope. So maybe those would be globals. Well, they can't be because it needs to be, well. Yeah. You need like the stack semantics. So what am I trying to say here? Um, like for four, right, we've got this new scope, which is the break scope start. So I mean, what I could do is pass into the statement block thing that. So let's just test, let's think about this. Does the stack semantics hold if it's a global? So like if this statement block, you could think of nested ifs, which like we have here, right? You have this if, that's gonna be the, uh, you know, this break scope start would be triggered here. 
And then here is a different one. So yeah, I mean, even though it's going to be kind of gross, I think maybe we just need to pass in the defer or the break. Break scope start. And why don't we just call this break scope? Eh. Break scope. Break scope start. So the defer scope start. I think we're just going to call this scope start because it's the innermost scope and the break scope is the break scope. Um, right, so uh, we're going to have to pass that in, I guess, here as well. Break, scope, start, and scope, start. So we've changed two fun uh, function signatures. Let's let the compiler help us find places we need to fix up. Um, well, the reason that's not working is because we need it here as well. Break scope. Start. Yeah. So statement block. What's the order? I think we did. Um, break scope, then inner scope. Scope start then inner scope. Now let's see. Uh, break scope starts. Statement block needs to take the current breaks 
hope start down here. Black takes the break scope start. Black, same thing there. Same thing there. Same thing there. And there. And there. And. Ooh, and decals, we don't have that. Do we? Deckle funk. So this is in Gen 7. Right, so here the, uh, there is no, um, Ah, uh, we fucked this up. It's here. So we need to handle null. Um, break scope start. So, sure, 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 sure. So, for continue. So yeah, we don't want pop current scope. We want Yeah, so instead of scope start, it's break scope start. So defer pop scoped. Scoped. Right, so it's that one up into the break scope start. That makes sense to me. So let's see what that does now. Now we get close file, but we're destroying the window too, which shouldn't happen. Because that's not a return. So, um, mm, I see. So it's not, um, I think what's happening is like before the while enters, we're saying, all right, the outer scope is whatever we're at here. It needs to be like inside the while loop, I guess. So what's happening there? All right, we're saying the scope start is here. Go in here and it's like, Hmm. 
so I think the best place to look at would be um, this uh, pop, I guess. Pop scoped. Let's break here and see what's happening. Defer pop scoped. Here. So, uh, what's going on here? The scope start is the 808. So the only thing in there right now is this line 23. Destroy windows, the only thing in there right now. Um, that must be this, we're here, right? Which is, no, that's not true. This should be in there too. Pop scoped, the scope start. This is the break scope start. Um, we need to back up. We need to back up. Uh, to. Let's do I suppose while would be where it starts. So what's going on in here? So right now the stack ends at 808, which means we have one thing in there so far, which is the, uh, this, which is true when we reach this. So that is true that this is the only thing in there. But when you enter the scope, you don't want them to be included. So when you execute that, our scope starts gonna be 808, which is this. I suppose what you actually want is like one past that, because that means anything after this is included in the scope. Or rather, we can handle that in the uh, We do like pop. Pop scoped. Yeah, so. Let's 
let's enter this, right? We're in the wild loop. The first statement is the window, then the defer. We're sorry, we started in while, right? So this is the file, then the defer. Oops. So the current statement is an init, right? Yeah, the init. Then we have the defer. This means we push onto there. Right, the current break scope start is 808. So it's here. The next statement is the if. Which we already verified works. But let's step through it. So you get the if. So we have to generate the statement block for that. So, the only one in there is a return, sure. So when we do the return, we say, we've popped off the stack. Oh, wait, I think I see. Yeah, the issue with this is like, once you've popped off the stack, Yeah, so here what happens is like, when you return, you're like, boom, boom, you pop these two off the stack to generate those. And then when by the time you reach this one, the stack is empty, right? Because like, basically you need a new copy of the stack um, for each scope. It's turning out to be interesting. So yeah, then, Something like that. Because what's happening now is end is 808, but here we pop one. How the fuck did pop make end? Oh, I thought that said, I swear that went up. That was weird. So it was 808, now it's 800. Headphones are stuck. There's nothing else to pop. So we return. So that this is the statement block for the if statement. Defer. 
fur leaf scope. So now the scope start is back. Actually, the end is back there. Right, that's the whole reason we have this enter scope thing. Because here you can pop and do all sorts of shit, but when you get to here, it resets it. So, yeah. I'm just uh, trying to figure this stuff out. Okay, so we just did the if, there are no else ifs, fine, right, so that was the whole if block, this is the next if, right, which is the one we care about, so step into there, this is a new if. So we enter a new scope. So the break scope for this is still 808, which is here, which is pointing like this is the, the, the thing where we either need to have a different function for entering a scope for break, which points at one ahead, or when we do the pop, we need to handle it there. On one end, we need to like, um, like increment or decrement it by one so that it points to like the next thing. I think that's our issue. Let's see. So, Go in here, this should be the continue, right? So pop scoped fine. That's great. That will give us back the uh, expert call. Should be the um, close, right? Yes. Now, oh, there's the whole problem right there. This should be pop scoped. still think we have the issue though where it's still gonna point to the wrong part of the stack I think no it doesn't we actually had it fine so that it was just uh, calling the wrong function because I'm a dumbass okay so here returns are working continue is now working we need to do break as well as scope exit. So for break, it's gonna be the same thing. Right, this. Yep, 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 that whole thing is the same. And then and this is gonna be break.
So, fuck yeah. The free, then the clothes. Yep. Now we need to do scope exit. And it's looking like we're gonna need to break this puppy out into some. But the thing is, is so for these, um, for these you do break scope, for return you do like global scope, and then for brace black it's going to be the innermost scope. So yeah, that's looking like a. You know, it looks like we're gonna wanna do something like So what does this need in there? You definitely need the scope. So it's going to be break, scope start in this case. Start. So um yeah, so this is fucked because you need Two scopes, and you need to know which one to use. So, do you just pass three pointers, I guess? Okay, you need break scope start, you need scope start, and then you need the defer scope. Just call this one like break scope, scope, and disperse scope. So this is going to be the Right. 
So you're gonna do this big scoop start, scoop start, go share, line, share, returns third, which might be null. So gen defers C. It's gonna need break scope start, scope start, and break scope start is the defer scope. It's a little ugly, but So, I mean, we could do like a stir f this continue. Right, break scope, break scope. Different levels of interaction because. statement C doesn't exist yet. Let's just do this. Okay, so that should work the same. This guy still works. This guy works. So this one's the same, I think. Defers. Should just all these guys. We should do the same thing with break. For return. This one's basically the same except for the scope to use. Is just the first stack, right? Like it's like the global. We could either do this or pass in null. Oh. I feel like null makes more sense. So if that's no, then it's just the defer stack.
so I think we can just kill that and that goes. Defer pop, right? Because this is going away. Oh, what is this gonna do? It's basically this. Return this. With this added on. Alright, so that should work the same. So when we hit the return, it does the same. So this is, this is good. It's good stuff. Okay, so now we need to do... When scope exits at the end of like a uh, basically an ending curly brace, right? Any any scope ending. Which would be I guess at the end of a statement block. left a nice to do for us here so I guess this would be gin um, defers so it takes in the scope start what is it it's break scope start then scope start then the one you're actually using, which is scope start in this case, I believe. Let's double check that. This is one of my favorites. Ah, oh, shit, look at that. I commented on it too. <laughs> Yeah, I love that trick. Um, what was I doing? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Double checking defers. So it's the break, then the regular, then the one you're using. So the break, then the regular, then the one we're using, which is regular. Um. And this is the string, right? So we can just directly do a DA printf into the string. Um, just that. Uh, generate defers for current scope. Um, so, hold on. Oh yeah, I just want to check this. So this should be um, here. We should see the uh, the free should happen here, and then 
here we should see a close. If uh, this worked, I mean. So yeah, it's working. The problem is our indentation has already gone away, which is this. So we don't want to do that until after this. So we can do generate the defers, we can leave that scope, do our indentation and then that. Mm. So we need the new line before we decrease. Yeah, what's happening here? So like scope ends. Wait, what do we do? So the problem is um, now we might need to add some defers before we add the closing um, per, uh, brace. So before we decrease indentation, uh, I guess we need to check if we have any defers. So we can do this. And then, you know, if defers, Turn them in there, sure, sure, sure. Um, but we need a new line first. Then my defers, then we leave the scope, then we decrease the indentation, do the new line, and close the scope. I think that should do it. Right, so here, once we leave this scope, which is here, there's an extra new line after. Because we're doing um, new lines after every one of these. Because you need it in those cases, but here you don't need it. It's not a huge deal, but it does bug me. So it's like this gen defers. Uh, it's doing new lines always. But it shouldn't if. Um, if it's. Uh, in the scope um, context. Uh, I mean, we could pass a flag to it, but that's kind of gross. I 
mean, we could have it not generate new lines after the last one, and then each of these. Handle basically like we're doing here. I mean, what I mean by that is we could say, like, if defers, then we just freaking return it like this with the new line. Say defers. Now let's just do a straight continue. Honestly, that's not so bad. That might be better. Let's just do that. So if the first turn this with a new line, it's just turns. I suppose we could even do So one liner, but like this is kind of clearer, maybe. I think that's fine. Let's defer and do them before the break. Break of type. The lines we just do it. Turn. Maybe it would have been better to just have that return empty string in that case, like this does, so... So I suppose this is like defers... This new line, turn that, burns, expert, else, this one might be the case where we actually need to do it. It's just return with the expert argument. Yeah. Mm. Okay, and then. 
agenda first. What we need to do now is just not, uh... Well, that's kind of fucked, because we don't know when it's going to be the last one. Uh, well, yes, we do. We just do this. If there's another one... We do the new one. Okay, and then in uh, in statement block, what now? So now for defers. A new line for the first one. We do the last one, which now doesn't have a space after it. Then we decrease the indent and new line. That should work. Um, well now, what the fuck happened to there? Ah! I see. We just did a raw new line. We need to do this gen new line. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So. Uh, we actually have to do this whole buff way of doing it. So, because of the new line shenanigans, ugh, that makes it kind of grosser. Uh, let's see. Um, so we have stir. This is really gross because I don't want to have to, like with the current APIs I have available, like with my whole buff printing thing I, I, I made, like what I would kind of have to do is can't just do this because we only want to add the new line if there are defers. So you kind of first have to say, all right, uh, you know, allocate a string for all the defers, right? And then if you have any, well, in that case, now copy them into this string the waste. We don't really need to do that, but we do so that we can do gen new line into there. You know, and then we can do you know right Continue into there and return the string. If we have the furs, copy them into there. Gen defers does use a stretchy buffer, so like technically what we could do 
is just gen a new line straight into defers. But that seems like we're abusing uh, the implementation detail of that. How do we want to handle that? I mean, we could just accept an extra space so that it's cleaner, but I don't think I want to do that. Or we can just deal with the wasteful string copy. Nah, that's not good. Like, the extra space is better than a slower compiler. Every time you have to copy defers. All right, so let's, uh, you know, back up, think about this. What's going on here is that, all right, we have two different contexts where we're calling den, uh, this gen defers C. And most of them, you want it to generate a new line for you But in the like statement block context, you don't because after the last one, what has to happen is the indentation decrease. So you need to do the de decrease uh, before the new line, which is why statement block handles the closing um, race because it needs to decrease the indent before the new line. I mean, I, it's gross. I don't like this, but you could just say like, you know, or rather false, like generate new line, trailing new line. That would fix it, you know? So uh, I guess we do with that for now. I really don't like that. But... So we do this if the first statement and trailing new line, then we generate it. So whole function signature is disgusting. Um, so we can go back to this. There's a couple places where we need to pass it. When we do it, I want trailing new lines here and here. And here. All right, so that fixed it. The return is go. Oh shit! What is that? Wait, what? So now it's the break and the return. What? Tr 
Trailing new line. If there's a defer statement. Oh, these are wrapped up, but they shouldn't really be. All right, so what we had before is this. Now what we're saying is like, if you're on the last one, So if you're uh if there's a next one you always generate it. Else there is no If the first statement or trailing you want. That's what you want. Alright, so if there's uh, a next one this is this will you know early out, I'll do that. Uh, or trailing new one. Okay, Jesus Christ. I'm getting tired, I need to take a break, I think. Um, I think it's working now, right? Here, with the return, we unwind the whole stack. So we start with this defer, then this defer. The second one for the continue, it's just the while scope, which is this one, that's right. Here, there's a new defer that was there, so we do the free, the close. When uh, this scope exits, then there's the free. When the while scope exits, there's the close, and then there's destroy at the bottom. Fuck yeah, that's, I think that's right. Uh, Yeah, we, we kind of wrote it out here too, right? Like what it should be. So we can compare these. All right. So close, destroy, close, pre-close, the free, the close, the destroy. That's pretty badass. I like that a lot. That's fucking cool. All right, uh, another thing we need to do is uh, switch, I guess, because you can break out of a switch. Um, right? So what would that look like? Switch on some value. Um, case one. I want to test some like uh, nested scope stuff here. So let's do another like uh, defer here for something. What should we do? We can just do another allocation, I guess. So, I don't know. Just give me a bite. Uh, defer. Free 
one. We have uh, implicit break, so it doesn't matter. Ooh, actually, that's interesting. Because there's implicit break, uh, is that going to trigger the defer statements? If I remember correctly, the way I handled implicit um, break is by inserting it in the resolution step. So it actually adds AST nodes for that, I think. We'll, we'll have to see. In case two, what if we do... Oh, another thing I haven't thought of is return. If you just return, it's probably going to generate a break after two on the seaside, but that's probably not a huge deal. Um, default. Let's just try the same thing. And two. Well, what if we like continue? Let's put that one here. So this one should just generate the uh, the free right there. Um. Mm. I'm just, uh, I'm thinking about like different uh, sort of like cross cutting cases or like nested uh, situations to test, but I think I should just start with the simple ones first. So. Let's just look at these switch things here. In which case, uh, we need to look at statement switch. Right. Scope enter and exit here. So, um, what do we got right now? So, that's the expert. This is for all of the cases. Sure, cases, 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 case expressions. Yep, and then we need like the case statement block, which is here. Uh, so something similar to this here. Where we say, whoops, I missed the lead block. So, yeah, I guess this, so it's like enter the scope before we uh, generate it, then leave. Yep. Then the only question is, um, when does the implicit break happen? Does that happen in parsing? Implicit break, yes. We push a new break statement. That's actually great. That's perfect. So that turned out nicer than I even anticipated. Cool, so this should in theory work now. Let's see. No, because we don't have val, which is this. We can even put it up here. Val is 69, of course. Uh, yeah, we fail. Unexpected token and base expression. Just 
this happen? I'm in parsing. So we have no expression. Where is that happening? Ah, um, this has to return. Wait, I think that's it, but like, that needs a better error message if that was it. That was it, but we need a, a good error message here. So this just says a search and failed. Um, so that should have been caught in the resolution. Statement return. just breaking if there's no expression but what we need to do is if expected return type then that's a semantic error So this is saying, uh, if we have a return type, but no expression, then that's an error, yeah. So what is this statement, pause. Um, I guess we can say expected return type something like uh, error messages are hard what does msvc say we can just um, if we look at main and just like were to return what does this tell us What? It lets you? Alright, what if we have something that's like... What? what? And you just return. Warning, what must have a return value? Let's sort of mimic this. So if at the end it returns, but here it doesn't, what does that say? Not all control paths return a value? And you, you say the function? I mean, I think we need a better message. Because here it's like you have a return, but there's no value. Missing return value. I don't know, I can't think of a good message name right now, so we're just going to go with that.
Yep. Alright, so now we have error missing return value on line 53. More like missing the uh, I don't know, something like function expects return value of type uh, this. Expected return type got no value. I mean, we could just say it like that. We could just say expected return. Expected return type this got no value. That's not terrible. And then we say type to stir on the expected return type. Expected return type and got no value. That's decent. So yeah, it'd be even better if we could have the function name, but I don't think we have any way to get back to that at the moment. Anyway, what's the deal with this? Uh, the switch, right? We are generating the free now. Case two, since it's a return, we have to close the file and destroy the window. Great. For the continue, I feel like the continue should close the file. Yeah, right? Yeah, we're also doing these redundant breaks after it continues and returns. Is that a problem in C? Shit. What if we just switch on one? Case to uh, return break to new. Uh, continue break. No, it's totally syntactically valid, as I'd expect. It's just the uh, gross, so we can keep a note about that, but it's kind of low priority. Uh, returns and con uh, return and continue statements in inside switch cases should not be followed by an implicit break. Yeah.
Um, what's up? What do we got? Anthony's lab. A sea chat, I see. I mean, not not really. I'm just uh, trying my best out here. <laughs> you keep telling yourself you want to learn. Atmos? Wait, what is that? No. Atmel assembly? What is that? But yeah, C is my uh, preferred language for, you know, recreational programming and stuff. Okay, they make microcontrollers. Sick. Yeah, I haven't done, like, uh, much embedded work at all, or any, really. Although, so, this uh, compiler I'm working on is, uh, like, Per Bonson's Bitwise, I don't know if you've heard of that, like, uh, he has this whole series where he's, like, building, it's, he stopped doing it, unfortunately, but, like, his whole plan was to build a simple computer, like, hardware and software stack, and he was going to target, like, a, a little RISC-V, um, platform, so, I think, I'm not sure how far he got it, because for me, the whole interest is just in the compiler, but, um, one of the backends was going to be for uh, Risk Five. Um, all my compiler does is C code generation, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm not sure uh, if you got there, but that would be interesting if I continue on to see about uh, generating Risk Five. Sorry, I'm like losing my train of thought about what I was doing before. Um, I think we just did this, right? Yeah, this continue, I do not think is working. Like the defer for this close should happen here as well. Um, and it's not, so why is it not? Sorry, we need to be in code gen. So first statement, continue. Um, why is this defer not hitting, right? So we are saying for the last scope that you can break or continue out of. That's what we want. I mean, let's step into it there, I guess. So... The first one is... This one. This guy. So let's see what's different between this one and that one. Right. So if we go into here, what do we have? Uh, the Break scope is the 808. Current scope is 810. Defer scope is also 808. So if we look at the stack, this is the current break scope. Okay. Which has the call to close. Like, this is the um, destroy window, this is the F close. So we 
we go ahead and do this. We pop another one off. Do we have one now? We don't. Great. Okay. So now if we go to the next one, this is the continuing the switch. So if we look at that, what do we have? So for break scope, it's 810 now. Why is that? Break scope, scope, diverse scope. Since the break scope is 810, So what that's saying is like uh, for this continue, like the associated scope, like the mo the innermost scope that this continue can break out of, should be this while loop still, right? That's implying that maybe this switch is like doing a break scope. Why would that be the case? I just buy a 6502 processor and play with that. Yeah, I uh, before I was working on this project, uh, I was running a NES, like an NES emulator, which uses a 6502. So I wrote an emulator for the 6502. That's a really cool chip. So what's happening with the scope? Enter exit for the switch. Scope start. Ah, because I literally said it right here because I'm an idiot. Um, you don't reset the break scope here. This is just a uh, block scope will get set there, which already happens in gen statement block, I think. Yeah, you already do that, so this was all just not necessary at all. We just need to pass in the break scope here. Yeah. So now, before the continue, we have the free, then the close. These extra breaks we can deal with later. Sick. You got a pile laying around? Yeah, for sure. Should put them to good use. Do you have any like ideas, stuff you want to uh, use them for? Project ideas? Um, all right, are there any cases I'm not thinking about then? I think we pretty much have what we wanted. I look back at what other notes did I take? I've checked in the context of the first statement, yes. Yes. 
Yeah. Oh, we did not do that. This allow returns and breaks into first statements. And then we also had to fix the uh, variable shadowing. Like we have to explicitly disallow that in order for this like macro expansion style the first statement to work. By that, you just mean that, like, uh, the. I mean, we can look at it like this. Like, right here, we say defer close file, but let's say in this scope down here, there was like a different shadowed variable, which is from a different. Uh, like this. Then... Like, this defer, when it generates the C code, like, it's gonna F close... It's just gonna F close file, right? But, like, that's gonna be this file here. So, we can't have that. Uh, but luckily, I already have like a code for warning about shadowed variables. Um, so let's check that out. And also, when we ran this initially, we had another issue with the. Uh, Disallow returns and breaks. So let's do this. Yeah, let's disallow returns and breaks. Yeah. So let's start with maybe the return and continue uh, return break continue I think are the three things that you can't have in a defer yeah um, so where that needs to happen in the resolution like in the semantic analysis type <coughs> part of the code, excuse me. So when we're resolving statements, uh, if it's a the first statement, right now we're just resolving it, but that's not gonna work because if it's a block, a statement block, we need to handle it differently. So we need to do the whole thing in like a separate code path. So what we want to do is check uh, if the fur let's pull that out. Like the inner statement is this thing. Let me say if the inner statement kind is a block, then uh, we're gonna do basically resolve statement block essentially. Do it in line or do we have a separate? I mean, this is the only place that it can happen, so we'll do it here. So if it's a brace block, then we just do them all like that. Else, uh, here we need to disallow as well. Uh, 
Okay. So if it's a race block, we enter scope. Locks, treatments by if um, I mean, basically, we just want to say, just wonder if I should have a uh, helper for this that's like if statement. Illegal and defer. And that's a semantic error. the moment. Yeah, I've heard it's uh, super weird with the borrow checker, just fighting that shit all the time. I haven't uh, touched it at all, so I have no opinion at this point. Um. Yeah. Legal and defer semantic error at... I guess you want to have it at this statement's position, right? So let's do this. Um, what do we call this? Like the block statement? Block statement. So statement illegal and for block statement, then semantic error at block statement position. Statements have a, a source position, right? Statements do have a source position. Great. So what would just happen? Uh, here. Um, uh, error messages are hard. I don't know, like, uh, we can fix these later. Illegal statements defer block would be nice as if we could have like a statement kind to string like we have for types like i want to be able to say like uh, this return i mean we could just say we know them right we could just say like uh Return, break, and continue. We're not allowed, I don't know. That's fine for now. So what do we do then? We, we just continue to the next one. Still prefer C, but it's pretty all right. If you need guaranteed memory safety, yeah, that makes sense. It does make sense. 
I definitely see, you know, there are areas where safety is super critical. I just think uh, it's maybe not so much in the general software case and they maybe go a bit too far on it, but um, like I said, I haven't used it, so my opinion is bullshit, basically. Um, yeah, this is semantic error. Otherwise, we need to check here as well. Um, or rather here. So if this one is also so yeah, else if this one's illegal, but this is gonna be the what did we call it? Inner statements. Should we just call that defer statement? I don't know. Like the reason I call that inner statement is because like it's ambiguous. Like defer is it uh, is it a, is itself a statement, right? And then it contains a statement inside of it. So is the outer one called the defer statement or the inner one called the defer statement? It's ambiguous. So I went with inner statement to make that clear, but once you get far enough away from it, that now seems kind of unclear too, but it's whatever. Um, so here we also have, if uh, this one's illegal, then yeah. It's also an error. Except now it's not in a block, but illegal statement uh, in defer. Turn break and continue not allowed. Yes. Um, otherwise, then we resolve this. This is just the inner statement. Yes. So let's see, does this make sense? We should probably move this down to The whole reason I had it uh, up here is because it was a, a one liner, so it fit with all the other small ones. Let's put it. Turn like that. Does it compile? It does not because block is undeclared. Um, if inner statement kind is that, then uh, inner statement. Block them statements. Blocks is not a member. Uh, what the fuck is that? Spirit is falling. What's up, dude? What's up, dude? How you doing? She scared me. Um, uh, we need to look at this AST node because I'm forgetting what is inside of it. So, a statement. Uh, brace block. Oh no, it just has a block. 
So we look at block statements, I guess, right? Statements, yeah. Uh, so what was that? Here. Blocks. Statements. Where did the fuck did that come from? This would be uh, inner statement block statements at I. Yeah. And then here. Uh, inner statement block statements. Wait, no, this is the block statement. Yeah. Cool. Uh yeah, we don't have statement illegal in this yet. So it's just a helper. Cool. Statement illegal and defer. So we just say statement kind is well a return break and continue anything else. Turn, continue, break. Well, you can't have a defer. Can you have a defer in a defer? What about nested defers? Seems weird. Maybe we don't allow that. And then, uh,. Brace block. The problem with that is uh, we're only checking, I think, at the... Yeah, let's just say you can't open another scope inside of a defer block because within another scope, we're not checking for returns in there and we don't really have a way to... So we'll just say you get one scope and a defer, and that's it. Uh, Brit, I didn't know there was enums. And C, yeah, C's got enums. Is that you meant? Do you know there's enums in C? Yeah. Um, but I know they're like uh, semantically different than like in C++, but uh, Yeah, I'm not C++ dude, so I'm not sure like how they work in C++. But in C, you know, it's just the uh, ints, integer constants. Um, I think this should work now, right? We compile. Um, so we should be able to disallow we can do a test of that. What real language doesn't have enums? Yeah. True. It's very useful. So, we also haven't 
checked out like uh you know having like a scoped thing in here so for example if we were to do this this should work right because this will be a statement like this is a single statement of type statement block so first of all that should work And then it should just do a new scope every time it does that, yeah. Yep. Um, and then if we do a break, that should not work. Yep, legal statement in defer block. Continue should also not work. Vim really does not like formatting, does not understand ION. That one, and then uh, return. Also, good shit. Fuck yeah, so I think we pretty much have defer. We implemented defer, basically. Um, fuck yeah, easy clap, um, but we still have some shit to do. We did that, which means we pretty much did that, um, but shadowing variables we need to fix because that is broken so maybe what we want to do first is push up or like stage this sheet um Temp can go away. Let's look over this stuff. All right, we had a defer. the pushing and popping semantics. Hmm. Right, opening new scopes. For blocks, yep. I'm gonna pass in that, yep. We add new keyword. And some notes, sure. Parsing. Open. Resolve state. Uh, yep. So this is making sure that uh, returns. Actually, honestly, that shouldn't be included in this commit, but we'll just wrap it in, whatever. And then we can add the test. All right, so defer statements. Fuck yeah. We're on that branch, right? Shit, we did that on master. That was kind of dumb. That was really dumb, but oh well. Okay, now let's fix, so now let's actually do a new branch for shadowed variables, let's call it shadow, sure. Um, so the way I triggered this before was um, the, the only real like um, test program, like demo I made was tic-tac-toe. 
and um, so right now that builds fine, right? If we go into tic-tac-toe, we can build it and run it, right? And then we win. But when I tried to shift around to show that, like, all right, so Ion has um, order independent declarations. So I was like, all right, I'll just throw these functions. Like, if I just take all the function, put them below main, um, that should work. And what triggers is this shadowed uh, variable warning, which is a bug because it's saying row and column are shadowed, but like, all right, they're defined in main here. And then they're defined in this other function here, right? That's not a shadowed variable. So on line 94, What does it think that's shadowing? Well, one thing I could do is... Shadowing here. I can do the same thing we did here. Um, well, anyway, what I think I want to do is... Uh, Sim shadow is nothing, right? So if uh, the name is in the local symbol table, then yep, this is a redeclaration. Shadow is this. Sim with shadow. Yep. Else if I suppose we can just do this right here once, right? You just say, you speculatively get this, and then say, hey, if this name's in the local symbol table, then you know that the shadow is a local symbol in the current scope, which means that it's a redeclaration in this scope, right? Sure. Then what you can do is say, otherwise, if it exists at all. So if it's not in the local symbol table, but it's in the symbol table, it means it's a global uh, symbol. And that means you're shadowing it. Or rather, it doesn't necessarily mean it's uh, a global symbol. It just means it's in a scope higher than your scope. So in some parent scope, there's a variable, right? So uh, this is also going to be an error now. So instead of that semantic error, Shadowing variable name this, and then let's do the same thing. Let's add a note. The problem is uh, this isn't going to show up 
um, because I'm asserting in semantic error right now to help with debugging, but we can turn that off for a second. Previous declaration of this is type there. And the previous declaration is here. Does that compile? Yes. So let's jump into error and uh, disable this for a moment so we can see uh, the notes. So if we try to build, what do we get? Oh, right. So it says on line 94, we're shadowing uh, row and the previous declaration with type int is on line 15. So, 15, these fucking error messages are pretty sweet. Really sweet. Here, so it thinks in main that, uh, what? How? How is that happening? Oh, fuck. I think I know what's going on. I think that the way that I'm currently um, putting these init statements um, is by making like var decals, I think, because they ha I'm uh, making these declarations. The real reason was just to get the position, but I think that might be biting me in the ass here. Let's look at, uh, I guess it's going to be statement init. Um, right, I even have a note about this. So the decal var used here seems a bit hacky. However, the declaration allows us to get the source position from the symbol table. Um, so what is the decal var? That's all fine. Because that doesn't actually deal with the global symbol at all, so that shouldn't be a problem. And we push a scoped symbol in. So... Scope is not exiting somewhere, I guess? Let me think about that. Um, I need to pee, so I'll be right back. Let's, uh... Is there a way to like hella zoom in on this? I don't know how to zoom on the fucking GUI mode. Whatever.
Alright, we're done peeing. What's up, dude? Hey, buddy. My dog's here chilling. What's up, bud? Hey, baby. Probably wants to go out. Um. Uh, Alright, what's going on? I accidentally saved this BRB file. Right, so something is happening with um, local symbols are, um, it was, uh, the manifestation of the bug seems like they're not getting, uh, like when we leave a scope, we're not, uh, moving the local symbol like uh, stack basically back where it should be like a stack pointer so let's investigate that um, this is happening the first place was where like line 94 so for this winner function so this is going to be in a knit. So name and local scope with scope start. So it's not, it's actually no, it's not finding it in local scope because if it was, it would be saying redeclaration, but it's saying shadowing. So it's finding it uh, in some parent scope, which makes no sense because hmm. well, let's maybe start stepping through where where would be the point that it um, gets inserted? Uh, man, uh, my brain's really struggling a bit. It's been a long session. Not that long, it's been like four hours, four and a half hours. All right, um, let's do this, let's do this. So, I mean, we could just break at statement and knit in resolution. So, let's see. Where's our statement? We're looking for line 94, or um, the first one. Let's look at where the symbol gets pushed, which is on line 15, which would be this row and here. So line 11, 22, what?
it's this is not getting uh, resolved as an init. Hold up. Statement init window. Ah, oh, God, I'm an idiot. It's the wrong fucking file. All right, so here we're now on line 15, which is the row. So this is the variable that's ultimately getting shadowed, right? So let's step through. Uh, it should have a type spec yet. We resolve it. There's no expression. So we create this declaration for it. Create a symbol. Well, wait a second. Should have stepped into that, but I didn't. Yeah, that just creates a symbol. It doesn't put it in the table, so that's fine. And then it pushes scoped. So let's look at you know, this. Before we do that, can I see the local sims and local sims end? So it ends at 9.10. So why don't we push one on? There it is, row. And end is 9.18. All makes perfect sense. Um, so then, uh, at the end of the while scope is where we should pop um, that scope. So how many other inits are there? There's only one other one, so we're going to hit that one. And we can step out. So if we run to here, this should be the while, right? So local sims end is at 938. Whoa. Row column side. What? So, interesting. Who needs a brain nowadays? Yeah. I need one right now because uh, it's starting to struggle a little bit. Um, I think, uh, right, there's sort of a difference. There's two things going on here that aren't being differentiated, right? So there's um, that the... There's parent scope. 
and then there so, so right now when it uh when you're doing the resolution pass right you're resolving each of these statements in main right um well specifically for while like this is a new scope here so you're saying all right these are new local symbols right in this scope and then you know you're going through statements and you hit this like make move for example which is a function that you haven't resolved yet right like you haven't seen it before so um well you have seen it because there's uh, multiple passes right in the parsing we will have parsed it and so you know that there is at least a symbol for this um so, but I think the issue is that we're resolving it and its entire body right now, which is causing the error because when we go into make move, right, um, we push these on side. Well, that's interesting. How come these didn't get marked as shadowing then? What? Maybe they did. Minus is 73. This one did. This didn't because it's not an interesting. So this scope doesn't, but it's like the body scope does. Yeah, okay. So there's a problem with um, immediately resolving function bodies when you encounter a symbol for the first time in the resolver. So let's look into that, right? So when we do like resolve decal func, Um, who calls this, right? This is where we do the funk body, right here. So, what's going on is... Uh, resolve statement. One of these statements is going to be a call, right? or it's a statement uh, uh, calls an expression not a statement but um where's this first one like it's in this while so like in this while statement the condition is an expression of type call and uh so in the call Uh, we resolve the expression, which is going to give us an expert name. Right, I believe. And so we resolve the name, which goes into resolve symbol, which gets us here, right? So we're going to resolve the function and then immediately resolve the body. Which is where the problem's introduced because now I guess the 
it, it, it thinks all of the variables on uh, in the parent scope right here uh, are parent. Uh, it thinks that this is a parent scope of the body of this function call, which is not true. Um, but how do I fix that then? Where do we want to do uh, function body resolution? Uh, huh. I guess you only want to do, you only want to resolve this body when you hit the declaration. Yes. That seems to make sense to me. So how do I differentiate those two? When does when do we hit the declaration? Daclefunk. Sim decal. Um, resolve decal. So all we have here is like resolve symbol. Hmm. Um, how do I differentiate between when I'm seeing this symbol from a call and from its declaration. Well, how did we get to this from the call, right? You started with expert call. Um, so here you're doing resolve expert. Expert name. Resolve name. Hmm. So it seems like right here, like we don't want to do this, because that's how I get there. But then when do we hit, in this case it's make move, when do we hit this actual definition. That's the point that we want to resolve that. So when does that happen? I guess in complete sim, right? Right, I think I'm starting to remember. The reason I did it this way is because, so I, I think I used to have it out here in complete sim, but was having issues with recursive functions. So um, let's let's go back and look at that. The Declaration of Independence. Yeah, that one. Uh, uh, I don't know why that is so funny to me. Uh, complete type happens where. Um, all right, I just want to look at ion. Here we do complete sim. So, right, parse all the declarations, go through all of them, and put all of those in there. Then go through all of those and complete sim. So you resolve it. 
if it's kindest type you complete it i think otherwise um if it's a function wait do we have that Some kind, yeah, we do. Some funk. Then we want to resolve function body. So that's all well and good, but then Um, I think the, uh, I was having problems with uh, recursive functions here. Now, let's check if that is the case, right? So, first of all, let's just see if this will solve our problem with shadowing variables. I believe it will. We go into here, build this. Redefinition, different basic types. So this is an error from the C compiler. So we did, uh, let's see what C code this generated. So this is the C code that my compiler generated, right? So errors it told me it was like online 49. Hmm. Right, so with functions, uh, we need to generate um, prototypes before. So I think, yeah. Yep, so we just need, uh, we're doing that for, um, like struct types and things. So it's in Cogen, preamble, All right? Just a bunch of random C includes we're probably gonna need. This is gonna get switched later to a cleaner thing. That's like the, the foreign includes by having like directives to do that. But uh, so type does for primitive types get put in there. Actually, yeah, this isn't the preamble. This is just um, like forward declarations. Yeah. So we forward declare all the types. And then uh, if it's a function type, then we just wanna uh, generate the prototype. So what do we do for that? Uh, gen, do we have like a gen funk? What is that? Gen decal. I guess type spec funk for the type spec. Symbol. So how do we get at that, right? We have the symbol, decal, funk, here, decal funk. This is in gen sim c, great. Params. But we don't want to do the statement block. So 
So we need all of this stuff to be in a different function. Gen decal funk is basically what I need, something like that. I guess I'll take a decal. Do something like this. So, um, right, that all funk. This thing, this thing here. Turn stir. Nope, we need to close this. And then return it. Sure. And then here. Or like signature is gin funk gin decal funk with this declaration, and then we print. That thing space that thing, which is signature and then the block. Cool. Second pile. No, we broke some shit. Stir. Right, so now we don't need the buff anymore. We can just uh, just do this. Return stir f. Cool. Um, yes. So. Where was the other place I was doing this? Where was I? The last one. Place. Here, okay. Forward decals, right. Um. So I guess we can add to the string this sim decal. Um, this and then a semicolon. And then we'll do a new line. 
So we want to put out declarations for every function, at least as a rough first version. And then gen decal func needs to be before we do forward decal. Huh. Okay. One parameter, one different from declaration. Um, 14, 15 and stuff. Oh, right. So these are foreign. We don't want to generate foreign declarations for foreign declaration for, uh, yeah, foreign functions. Foreign. So note is foreign. Yeah. So... Or decal C. All right, if it's not a foreign decal, Then we want to output it. Yes. Okay. So now we're still exploding. Why? Why is it still putting those out? These are marked as foreign, right? All these functions are marked as foreign. Did I not recompile? Is that the problem? Yeah, we didn't recompile. All right. We're really getting tired. Forward deck walls. So. Let's put the helper like most of the well. Maybe it's fine there. Oh, that's what I wanted to do, right? Like gen decal funk. It needs a C suffix because this is the C cogen. Right. Now maybe this should work. Great. Okay. Now it works. Let's check out the C cogen. Right. So we've got the preamble. We are now forward declaring all the functions. We're not getting any errors about shadowing. Brilliant. And we can run. Yes. But we have one more potential issue, which is that I think this might have broken uh, recursive functions. So tests i think i have one for that whoops so in tests test recursive
Yeah, this tests both. This is the test I use for both cases, right? It tests uh, out of order declarations as well as recursive functions because both of those need to work. So I have a feeling this is going to explode, but um, tests test recursive ion. It does work. Huh. I was getting cyclic dependencies before, so I must have fixed that elsewhere. Let's uh, make sure it actually compiles in C. Tests, test recursive C, yes. So if I compile that, Test recursive C. It does not. V uses undefined struct V back to. Why doesn't that go before? Right. Um, well, that actually doesn't make sense. Like wh when you when we see this definition. Right, we're going to resolve its body, and at that point, resolve this. Why? Why is that not happening? Oops. So complete sim resolve funk body happens right here. Oh right, this is the thing. So the reason I was trying to do this here is because after you resolve this symbol, so like um, In this case, uh, right, you're like you're hitting this symbol out of order, right? You resolve it, which is just the function declaration line, and then you put it in the ordered symbol table, and then you resolve the body. That doesn't work because then uh, this function gets ordered before any of the things that its body depends on. Um, so that's why I had to put it here. But what I'm thinking is, all right, who else calls resolve sim? I think a lot of people do. Actually, no. Maybe what needs to happen is just... This adding to ordered symbols doesn't happen until it's complete, I guess. What if we were to put it here?
Hold on, let's rebuild. S recursive ion. So we fail here, which is probably because of this. It's a codrian failure. All right. Um, I should probably stop and just try to figure this out tomorrow, but like it's bugging me. I wanna I wanna get this I wanna see if I can finish this. I'll give it a little bit more time and then I'm starting to get real tired. Um Okay. So the two things that are conflicting are that Out of order declarations and recursive functions. The issue is that, like, when you uh, resolve a function, you don't want to put it in the ordered symbols until its body has been resolved because any. Uh, Any declarations that it depends on need to be ordered before the function. Okay. So that's why this was here. The problem this introduces is that um, I think it was that now local symbols are. Um, was it wasn't the problem that local symbols are now like parent scopes that aren't actually parent scopes because for example in a function call any variables in the uh, function that that calls the other function will be seen as in the parent scope yes yeah, so how do we fix this? How do we fix this? How do we fix this? What's the wrong name? For type specs, there's two places this happens for type specs and for expression names. Hmm. Expected variable constant or function, but then we'll type that. Uh, 
Test cursing ion. So the two things going on is like right here, right? We go to resolve this. We need to resolve the body before this gets added to the order symbol table. But similarly, if we have some function caller, I don't know, doesn't matter, that calls uh, out of order. Like when we resolve this function call, we don't want to do the body yet. So I think the, the the root of the issue is that we don't really have a way to differentiate these two right now. We need to. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's look at, let's debug and see when we hit that. Let's get right, uh, Alan Stewart's back. Um, so if we're looking at tests, test for cursing. Resolve expert name, I suppose. Okay, so the expert is. order sure we go and we resolve that name what does that do we say get the symbol and then resolve the symbol which says, all right, it's a function. So we resolve that. We correctly are not doing the body at this point. It's just a call, right? But we don't want to add it to the order symbols here. Right, so that's the resolve expert name. Then we want to look at um, well, where do we hit that? I suppose it's just going to be complete sim. This is now the function, great. So, complete sim, we also go into resolve sim. So this is the same function that resolve expert name, or re yeah, resolve name calls. And that's the crux of the problem, I believe. So I think it's like only when you complete the sim. Yeah. So Resolve name is where like uh, calls, like call expressions for functions will get resolved. All you want to do is type check it, but you're resolving the full thing, which 
adds it to the order of symbols, which you don't want to do. Um, okay, keep that in mind. And then what happened when we did the, uh, this guy right because what I was thinking is like okay well if you don't when you call resolve name you don't uh, so if we push it here and then here you say all right we're gonna resolve a symbol and then we say if Sim kind is sim funk, or if it's not, only then do we push it. Maybe that makes sense. Then we explode on cogen. Why on cogen? Gen Sim. Void? What? Why is this the manifestation of the issue? Called Jensen. Hold up. So before. Resolve Sim. Wait a second, some of these return so that this never gets hit. is just mush at this point. I think I need to uh, try to figure this out tomorrow. I do think that is what we have to do. So I think where did we leave off? What changes did I have here? So we at least put that out. That's good.
then I do in coach. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Four decals and such. I guess. So that's how it was before, I believe. Uh, let's see. Cogen, yes. Yes. Moved that. That's commented, but I think we just want to where is that? The fuck? Gen Sim C. And then this is tic-tac-toe, we don't want to fuck with that yet. Uh, Alright, so that was kind of a, like, lame place to end up, but, uh, oh shit, what's up, what's going on over here? Afraid of you. What's up? What's up, afraid of you? How you doing, dude? Uh... Anyway, yeah, that was sort of a lame place to end up, like, struggling around with, like, the variable shadowing stuff, but what was really fucking rad is we got the first statements implemented, so let's, like, uh, look at that one more time before we head out. So, what do we got? Uh, let's stash this and go back here. Uh, yeah, the first statements are just done, right? So... Let's close the debugger. Load the shit and look at the defer test. Right, so now we can do shit like this, right? So, uh, we added a new statement, a diverse, the first statement, right? Which, uh, you know, Following this keyword, there is one statement, and since um, like statement blocks are also a single statement, you know you can do this with a bunch of stuff in here. But uh, right, and 
the importantly there's a number of places where um on the c cogent side what has to happen is like these statements that are in defers need to be output right so if you're in a scope there's return continue and break as well as just uh, reaching like the end of a block where the defers need to be output so with returns and so the way you do that is we're basically keeping a stack of um defer statements right so anytime when you're um doing cogen right when you encounter a defer you push that onto the stack right and then um when you encounter any type of statement that has um, something that you can break out of so while loops for loops switches um, you keep sort of a marker in the defer stack that's um, the innermost scope that you can break out of with breaker continue right i'm calling that break scope so let's go look at some code about that so um that's in Cogen, basically, is where all that stuff is. Here. Man, what's going on? Right, so we just have uh, a stack, which is just a, a static array, right? And uh, you can you have these helpers to enter scopes and, and whatnot. But if we look at, like, uh, a while statement, for example. Right, so when we uh, are generating a while statement, right, when we hit this, what we do is say, okay, at this moment, we have uh, wherever the defer scope, where, uh, wherever we're at on the stack, like all of the defer statements that are there so far, we're going to take a marker and say like, all right, this is the beginning of this uh, while scope, which becomes the new inner scope that you can break out of. And the reason that's important is because when you hit things in a, um, I need a better term for this, but it's like break scope, a thing that you can break out of. Well, when you hit a continue, well, then anything that was up to the most in our previous like break scope, those are the first statements all get output. And then for break, it's the same. And then for return, though, it's um, since you're returning from the function, all of the uh you unwind the entire defer stack right so in this case you have this like deferred destroy window that's at the top of the function that also needs to get output here so if we um, whoops if we build and run this i can show you the generated c code for that um, so uh ion tests defer test ion right so and we can look at them side by side so it'll be clearer so here's what you have right so at the top you have this <coughs> uh this defer at the top scope then when you enter the while Excuse me. You have this uh, open, and you're going to defer close in the file, right? And that's in this break outable scope. So when you hit the return, you want to unwind everything. So that means you do the close and the destroy window, which you'll see here. Then at a continue, you're just going to the like innermost break outable scope, which is the while. Um, so this is just going to be the f close, right? Then in here, you enter a new scope and do. Uh, a defer there and then break which breaks out of this while scope so you have the free defer and the close that you want to generate c code for right so that's here right? you have this free and this close then you break out of uh or sorry when, when you exit this scope that's just the innermost scope so this free runs and then when you end the while down here this defer also needs to run so you'll see that here and then in switch statements it's the same thing as with while right it's just a new inner scope 
Um, so yeah, I guess that's the best I can explain it at the moment. My brain is kind of fried after working on this, but that's pretty fucking cool. Uh, I'm pretty stoked about that. So uh, that's a better note to end on than like struggling with shadowing variable bullshit that I was uh, not able to do. So I'm going to have to do all that tomorrow. But we got defer in, and that's sick. So I'm going to end on that. Unless anyone has a question about that, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for chilling, and I'm out. Yeah, defer. It's pretty sweet. Uh, yeah, how much is public? Uh, here. Bitwitch. Ion compiler. It's all here. Um, but honestly, I suggest you don't look at mine, because uh, this is the first time I have ever written a compiler. So, um, And it's based off of um, Peravonson's Bitwise. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with his series, but uh, like Ion is his language. Um, this implementation, I'm doing like a parallel implementation, but I would check out his. It's going to be way better than mine. And like, this is the Bitwise series where he talks about, uh, you know, how to write a compiler, basically. But uh, yeah, you can see my shit on GitHub. Alright, I gotta sleep. Later.